Implications of running time variability for passengers and operators. A case study using Bondi's 333 buses. A paper submitted to the 40th Australasian Transport Research Forum held in Darwin in 2018. The author is Matthew Hounsell. I was undertaking a master's by research for the Institute of Sustainable Futures at the University of Technology in Sydney. On an average pre-COVID workday, Sydney's trains had 1.2 million tap-ons, while its buses had 0.9 million tap-ons. The buses had at least two in every five passengers. The city's humble buses are essential to support the social and economic functions of Sydney. The 380, 381 and 333 all run in the Oxford Street Bondi Road corridor. These buses alone had 25,000 tap-ons on an average workday. The level of patronage makes the Oxford Street Bondi Road bus corridor an essential feature of Sydney's transport network. This paper was written to answer the question, can we use publicly available data to analyse running times to assess a service's reliability? Specifically, is it possible to do without code? Is the method teachable? And more importantly, is the method customer-centric? Can the method be used to identify problem areas? This paper leverages the service quality loop from the European Standard on Public Transport, number 13816. This paper examines measurements of performance to assess how the bus services were delivered. It is essential for the service partners to know how the services were actually delivered because customer perceptions will be based on delivery, not promises. In the case of the 333, the service partners are Transport for New South Wales, who sets the routes and service levels, the STA, who operates the buses, as well as Roads and Maritime Services, who control the traffic lights and bus stop locations. Dr. Zyboltz describes the transport and land use system as being that which emerges from the urban environment. It starts with the physical infrastructure, such as the roads and railways which are then operated using a particular set of targets and levels of service. This then leads to travel behaviour from the system users and expectations about the future. That behaviour leads to patterns of land use. The key fleet equation for public transport is that the number of vehicles is equal to the return running time divided by the headway. From the key fleet equations, we know that the vehicle headway, the running time, and the number of vehicles are interrelated. We know that a transport and land use system emerges from the combination of the physical infrastructure, limiting the available operations, which leads to the different travel behaviours of the system users. We know that the physical infrastructure controls the running times of the, of the vehicles, and also can place limit on the number of vehicles usable. We know that the operations controls the running time, the vehicle headway and the number of vehicles. And we know that the travel behaviour is governed by both the vehicle headway and the running time. And we also know that the number of and behaviour of system users can influence running time for things such as dwell times. Together, these show that they are all interrelated between the transport and land use system and the operations. Dr. Michelle Zybots identified the measure stabilise and reduce framework while working on the dwell time issues for Sydney trains and Queensland Rail. I realised there were implications for this for the running times of Sydney buses such as the 333. The idea being that if we could segment the route, we could identify the key problem areas, working out what the causes of those problems were, thus allowing us to reduce the variation and stabilise the running times. Thereafter, we could work on um, measures to improve the running times on the key corridors and overall improve the system. In 2016, the 380 and the 333 were running on the tramway from Circular Quay along Elizabeth Street, then Oxford Street. Then they were diverted at Bondi Junction into the interchange and then they returned to Bondi Road before uh, finishing on Campbell Parade just at the tram terminus at North Bondi. The 381 actually follows the correct route because there was a slight diversion off the main road 
due to uh, the gradient being too high for the tramps. Table 8B summarises the service targets for the 333 running inbound from North Bondi to the Sydney CBD in August and November 2016. That is what will be analysed in the rest of this video, unless otherwise explicitly stated. As we can see from the table that the number of services was usually about one every 10 minutes or six an hour, except for the morning weekday peak where they offered up to 13 services, which is one every five minutes. In the evening, it drops to one every 20 minutes, but that's still a good service for a bus system. Remembering, of course, that there was also 380s running on this service at this time. The expected running time for the services during the weekdays range from 32 minutes in the morning to 39 minutes during the day, whereas on the evening it could range from 29 minutes to 44 minutes. This significant variation in the expected run time or the run time targeted suggests that the operator knew that the services were going to be imperiled by traffic and the prioritisation of private cars. New South Wales Treasury desires distance-based tolling because it considers it the best way to achieve a maximisation of revenue from the taxpayers in New South Wales. As part of that demand, there was significant infrastructure added to the Opal electronic ticketing system, which requires it to have GPS tracking of all buses to locate where stop they were at in order to know what distance band to charge the relevant customers. What this means is that there's a large amount of big data available for us to understand the service delivery, the real world actual service delivery, as identified in the service quality loop of the services. This histogram plots on the horizontal axis the run times and the number of services with that runtime on the vertical axis. So from this, we can see that the majority of run times were between 40 and 45 minutes, and that there were some run times, 43, between 55 and 60 minutes. But as well, we can see that there was a significant number, or 63 run times, that were below 30 minutes. So 30 minutes is doable, it's just that the private car traffic was prioritised over the buses. Using a whisker plot, we can see that the data in November has a significant interquartile range of nine minutes and a significant range from 27 to 62 minutes indicating that the services could run substantially better. Worse, the November data has many significant outliers even up to 97 minutes. So this whisker plot for the inbound runtime shows that during the weekdays there is a substantial difference for each day of the week with Saturday uh, more controlled runtimes and Sunday having substantially better runtimes with a mean runtime of 37.6 minutes and an interquartile hour range between 33 and 43 minutes. Uh, this suggests that the traffic is a substantial problem for the 333 and we know from experience in Sydney that Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday are the days of the week with the highest level of traffic. As such we can break this down even further and for the hour of the day on the horizontal axis and the runtime on the vertical axis, we can draw a whisker plot for each hour to allow us to analyze which hours of the day are the most problematic. What we can see is that the seven to eight has the worst range and the worst interquartile range, whereas 8 a.m. also is one of the uh, worst performing times, but the position of the mean at 8 a.m to 9am indicates that it is more skewed towards being slower. Similarly, we are able to see that the 3pm is also an incredibly bad time for inbound services on this route. Standard deviation is another common statistical tool and we are able to use that to assess the variation of certain distributions. The 7am and 8am hours of the day on the standard workday are the most variable according to their standard deviation, except for the Saturdays where the evening is one of the most variable. We can then examine the route to determine whether the services are performing as expected. 
On the horizontal axis, we have the hour of the day, and the difference to the timetable is the vertical axis, with the columns being the average and the lines being the maximum. So we can see that on the Saturday, the worst performing is in the evening, whereas on the Sunday, again, it's also in the evening, but earlier in the evening. But the Saturday, Sunday also is frequently running ahead of time, whereas the workday is almost always running late, and its maximum lateness is off the charts. But the 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. period is often 10 to 15 minutes late in terms of its end-to-end -end run time. We can break down the run times into discrete sections to focus on identifying key points. And in this case, we took North Bondi to the top of the hill, where the tram returned to the main road. Then we have the section of Bondi Road to Bondi Junction, the section of Oxford Street to Taylor Square, and the section of Taylor Square through to Martin Place. Those are the four sections that are used in the subsequent analysis. Examining those sections, we can see that they all have different means, but they do have a clear example of being less reliable, with the range being substantially higher on the Taylor Square to CBD, but there being more outliers on the Bondi Road section. Sometimes a graph is the most expeditious way to do an analysis. On the horizontal axis, we have the hour of the day. On the secondary right axis, the black line with the stars is the full route running time. On the left axis, which is the primary axis, we have the running time for the various sub components. It is quick to see that the route on Bondi Road to the interchange is the one that is causing the most impact on the full route run times. However, we can also see around the 1500 to 1600 band that there is a cumulative effect caused on all of the sections towards the city, which increases the overall running time, suggesting an impact with school children. The previous chart was looking at absolutes, but in order to do a measure stabilize reduce approach, sometimes the variation is just what we want to focus on. And sometimes it makes it quite clear what is actually causing the problem from the variation. So in this chart, it is quite obvious that the standard deviation in the route on Bondi Road is the one that's causing the most standard deviation on the full route for those key hours. And then later in the day, the school route um, getting to the Bondi Road is the one that's causing the most variation. So in conclusion, yes, it is possible to use publicly available data to assess the reliability of a service. It can be done with Excel. This was all done with Excel. We can focus on the customer perspective from this data. It is teachable. Um, and it does identify problem areas and the standard deviation here and just basic whisker plots are a good way to achieve that. This footage is of the Brisbane busway because I couldn't find any stock footage of the Bondi Road corridor. Special thanks to Neil Douglas, a transport economist from New Zealand for his assistance with this paper and a big thank you to the Transport for New South Wales open data team who are always helpful and it was on their platform that this data was released for everyone to analyze. Thank you, good night.